filmmaking can require a lot of gear. C-stands, diffusions, cameras, lenses, the dollies, the list goes on and on. And the need for gear doesn't necessarily end as soon as you walk off set. An all too often overlooked component of filmmaking and specifically post-production is data management or storage or hard drives. So what do you need to get the job done? Well, this is an age old question with an answer that's continually changing. There are a few different ways to look at this problem and each film project has its own set of constraints and requirements. So by the end of today's video, I hope to arm you with the information you need to build your own solutions and workflows with OWC Solutions to get your project across the finish line. Let's go. Looking at filmmaking from a bird's eye view, a typical day on a film set, no matter the size, will look something like this. You will be shooting media to your camera, to a memory card, and very quickly you'll need a repository to dump that media. This will allow you to clear those cards and continue shooting. It is also a generally accepted truth that you should always copy your media to at least two locations, so that means two hard drives, likely. Now, once your entire shoot concludes, your editor will need a drive to edit from. One of those copies we made on set will become the working drive. The other drive from set will be a backup in the event of a catastrophe with the working drive. Your editor will likely make a copy of the working drive as well in order to have multiple redundancies. There is a three, two, one rule with backups, but that's for another conversation. Now, back to that working drive. This drive will require enough capacity to hold the raw media, as well as have room for After Effects templates, graphics, images, songs, sound effects, any exports and revisions of the final product as well. And it also has to be fast enough to play back your media. So this may take a little bit of planning ahead as you don't wanna simply just get a drive that's just big enough to hold the raw media. You're gonna need some headroom. Now, I also understand there are different budget levels in filmmaking and they're all going to require different solutions. So in this video, we'll build a few different scenarios for a few different workflows. These are all gonna be time stamped, So if you wanna to jump to a certain section of the video that fits your situation, go right ahead. I won't be offended. For the budget conscious filmmaker just starting out, or say you're working on a passion project that you just don't have the budget to go all in on every piece of gear, you know, because you spent a lot of money on your camera and the budget has to equalize somewhere. I get it. We have a solution for you. In this case, dump your project media from the camera onto a Mercury Elite Pro Mini that's going to be appropriate for you and you can shuttle that over to your editor. Or you can bring it home with you if you're going to be the editor on this project. We are trying to save money on this project, right? So edit it yourself, you'll learn a lot. Work off that Mercury Elite Pro Mini with speeds up to 542 megabytes per second. You might need to make some proxies for editing depending on your source media, but overall you're gonna be in great shape with this drive. Now, before you get working on your edit, there are a few options for backing up your files. You can simply send them to a cloud service that you may already have, like Google Drive or Dropbox. Those do have their limitations though, because they're very slow. Or you can put them on a bigger drive with RAID protection like the Mercury Elite Pro Quad or a Thunder Bay 4. Okay, so we've graduated to a little bit more intense workflow. The cameras have gotten better, therefore the files have gotten bigger. You're gonna need hardware solutions that can keep up. The biggest things that are going to change are drive capacity and drive speed. From your memory cards, you're going to wanna to dump media on set to something like an Envoy Pro SX or even a Thunderblade. These are NVMe solutions, which means they are fast, up to 2,800 megabytes per second fast. And on a more advanced set, let me tell you, time is money. You don't wanna be waiting on cards to clear when the director's ready to do another take. With write speeds up to 2,800 megabytes per second and reconfigurable for RAID protection, the OWC Thunderblade is a data wrangler's best friend. While that Thunderblade can become your mega fast working drive, you can back up all your footage from set to a RAID protected Thunder Bay 8. This eight bay storage companion has all the room you're gonna need. So when you get back to your editing station and you do this backup, you can know that your files are safe and sound. Now, let's talk about a really high-end workflow, one that's likely reserved for commercials or feature films. Well, we have a solution for you as well. This is where the cameras are generating massive amounts of data over multiple shoot days, and post-production can often be happening in tandem with production. This scenario obviously presents a different set of challenges, and we have the right solutions here to navigate these waters. This is where OWC's NVMe interchange workflow comes into play. As we know, NVMe is very fast and some of OWC's NVMe configurations can give you massive capacities at crazy fast speeds. And the foundation of this post-production workflow is going to be a Thunder Bay Flex 8 and also a Jellyfish, but we'll get to that in a second. This is if you have multiple post-production professionals in your organizations. But how do we get our media to the Flex 8 or the Jellyfish or both? Well, from our cards, we're gonna dump the media from the camera onto a Flex 1U4 rack-mounted solution on your DIT card in this scenario. 
This solution configured properly allows you to create a working shuttle in bay one, for example, that can go directly to post. Additionally, and simultaneously, I may add, you can create a backup in one of the other bays in that same enclosure. Once that backup is created, pull out the U2 shuttle from bay one and ship this off to your editor. Your editor can now access the data on this drive via Helios or a Thunder Bay Flex 8, which is configurable in a lot of different ways up to 144 terabytes. Basically what you've done here is you've created a Thunderblade in Bay 1. That can move over to your editor and you get those speeds. The important part is the NVMe drive, the U2 shuttle, it slides right in and lets you get to work. So simply insert that NVMe shuttle into one of the appropriate slots on a Flex 8. At the same time, using a checksum data management software like OWC's Copy That, create a backup on a RAID protected drive in that exact same enclosure in the Flex 8. Now, you have a backup on set in the DIT cart mounted Flex 1U4, as well as on your Thunder Bay Flex 8 in the post house. Lots of protection is a good thing at this level of workflow. If you have multiple editors or stakeholders who need to access the same media at the same time, a Jellyfish shared storage server might be right for your team. With a Jellyfish, multiple people can connect via 10 gig ethernet and edit, color, watch revisions, and on and on. Jellyfish are massively customizable and they get really big as well, so they can be built to your needs. Set up a workflow call if this seems right for your organization. Now, finally in this workflow, we are going to create an air-gapped copy of all our media with LTO. This is a cost-effective and incredibly safe way to back up all your media from a project. In fact, it's required by some production companies. Make an LTO tape and store it in a separate location so you can sleep easy at night. Air gap data protection for your backup is the single best way to ensure that nothing will happen to at least one copy of your precious data. So even if all those other drives fell off a boat into the ocean, you can recover your original data from these LTO tapes. Okay, so there you have it. Those are the drives you're gonna need as a filmmaker at every different level. I hope this video was helpful and you gained some insight into the products and solutions we built here at OWC. From everyone here, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time. And let's see some of those films you're making.